I am Pinstar, and today we've got Stellaris Megacorp. And today I've got something special for you today. Uh, beside me, my lovely wife, Mystic. Hello. Now, Mystic, have you ever played Stellaris before? Nope. But... Not, not even a single second. <laughs> but you are no stranger to, uh, to sci-fi, uh, are you not? Oh yeah, Mass Effect, probably one of my favorite series of all times. Excellent, excellent. Well, my this series here today is going to be a tutorial. For those of you who are very familiar with the game, this might not be for you, but for those of you who are just getting into the game, or for those of you who've been away from Stellaris for quite some time and have no idea what the Sam heck is going on, this will be a series for you. So in our first episode today, I'll be guiding uh, my lovely wife through creating her very first race. So, take the mouse, okay. let us start a new game. Ah, uh, okay. All right, so the the various races that appear in the game, uh, you have the, the pre-generated ones, you have a couple of uh, ones that I've uh, uh, created here, but we're gonna start from scratch for you. So go ahead and go up there to create new. Okie dokie. And select. Now, essentially, what we are making is your empire, your spacefaring empire. So we're creating not only a, a physical species, but also the sort of the government and society that makes up that species. Are they peaceful and, and, and you know, neighborly or are they warmongers or are they something else entirely? Your first choice is um, pure, technically, uh, technically speaking, pure cosmetic. But a lot of people are very uh, attached to various uh, species types, and that's their appearance. Okay. Um, we've got a couple of humanoids here, but go ahead and go through and take I, a... I see something that looks like a Klingon and something that looks like a Vulcan already. Yep. <laughs> a, lot of, uh, a lot of nods to uh, established uh, ones there. Um, and now if you want to play machine empire, basically a sentient AI, um, you can pick one of these. Uh, but any of the others work uh, for any of the other empire types, and none of the uh, different types of um, races have any sort of bonuses or penalties from just being, you know, mammals don't have a bonus to something over reptiles, for example. Okay. So, okay, so like I can pick anything and they won't have any sort of benefit over exactly. anybody else. Okay. Oh man, there's a lot to choose from. Yep. This isn't good for me. <laughs> way too. Is that a peacock? That is a peacock. Ooh, an alien peacock. Hmm. Well, I was going to say that I'm indecisive, but then I saw the peacock. <laughs> and now I'm thinking that I'm not indecisive. Is that a radish? Yeah, radish or tomato, man. It kind of looks like a radish. Yeah. Radish man. Okay. <laughs> uh, peacock. All right, peacock, peacock it is. All right, go ahead and hit next. Uh, go ahead and give your your species a name. If you can't think of a, a of one, you can always hit the dice for a random one. I'm trying to think of something peacock related, <laughs> but I I don't. All right, hang on. I'm gonna go with uh, the mystic race because my name is mystic there you go plural hang on we gotta gotta change all this now and then just hit the thing here and it'll and it'll find the adjective for oh that. okay <laughs> bio obviously optional doesn't have any in-game effects um, okay next so the nameless are um are two things the ship prefix are you know sort of the like oh yeah british okay. navy would be uh you know a, a, a HRA, um, but it would be basically the prefix of your ships. And then as far as the names, it comes up with different um, sort of uh, normal names uh, for uh, for what you're looking for. You know, different, you know, nameless, again, all pure cosmetic. Uh, there should be some avian ones there for you. Okay. It gives you some examples of, you know, ships and planets and fleets. Okay, so it's always ISS for prefix. Well, you can you, you can you can change the prefix oh. to whatever you want. I'll, I'll keep it. Okay. All right, and then once you're happy with the name list, um, majestic slaughter. Good grief. <laughs> um, 
perceptive plumage. I like that. Okay, we're going to go with that. All Besides, right. this is all about plumage. I feel like yeah. a peacock race needs to uh, need, needs to have plumage in their name. All what is this? Plumage. Do I have to do anything with we'll, this? We'll get to oh, that shortly. Okay. All right, so now this is the first choice you'll be making that has a, a concrete in-game effect, and this is your racial traits. These are some of the physical um, or natural characteristics of your race, things that they are good at and things that they might not be so good at. Uh, the way it works is you start out, you get two trait points uh, to start out with, and each of the positive traits has a red number uh, showing you how much that trait costs. Now, you can get more trait points by taking negative traits that are that are harmful or otherwise bad. Um, but you uh, overall, oh, I see. Okay. You, have a, you have a total of five different traits that you can pick, positive or negative. You can pick fewer than that if you want. So wait, trait points and trait picks. Points are the, the sort of the worth of them. The picks are just the number of different entries that you can, you can pick up. Oh, so, so I can take five... One point ones. Well, okay. you'd you'd have to you'd have to get some extra negatives to pay for the ex the, the ones but beyond two. Oh oh okay, so I could pick five traits in total. I get it now. Yeah. Okay. You can't I just understand. take all the negatives. You can't take all positives. All the positives. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, um, and I'll, sh I'll let me let me give you a little tour and, and sort of the the basic idea of what these traits do for you. Um, so. You can mouse over each of one each one of them to uh, get an idea of what they do. So agrarian, oh, I didn't mean to do that. That's a, okay. Agrarian makes uh, if if your uh, race is employed as farmers, the farmers um, are make fifteen percent more food, just straight okay. up bonus at that. Uh, if they're employed as a technician, basically um, they work the power plants and other energy production infrastructure on your planets. They create uh, fifteen percent more energy credits. Okay. A note about energy credits is they're not only energy in the sense of you know having enough electricity to run your your uh, empire, but they are also the galactic currency. And are, so oh. so you don't so it's sort of a a way of making raw currency. Um, that's, that's used for both trading, buying, selling, and paying upkeep. So very versatile. Can you add trades as time goes on, or are yes. you stuck with these? No, you oh, can. Okay. You, there, there are ways to uh, genetically modify your species uh, once you unlock the correct uh, technologies and undergo some projects. Oh, okay. Industrious gets raw minerals from your miners. Uh, increases that. Intelligence. There are three different t uh, fields of research that govern all the techs in the game. Uh, being intelligent gives you a 10% boost to all three of them. So whenever any of your pops are researching, they'll do all three flavors 10% uh, faster. Okay. Uh, thrifty. When um, uh, certain jobs create what's called trade value. Trade value, when, when it makes its way to your capital, and I'll explain this later as you're playing, um, will turn into useful goods um, and, and basically e economic uh, stuff. Basically, this is how good your civilian economy is, and you get to tax it once it makes it to your trade hub. So the more civilian economy, the more you get to tax and the more benefit you get from that. Okay. Did you want to go through all of these? Or? We, we, I, we, I, we can skip, like, you know, the engineers, physicists, sociologists, those just play into more specialized to Specialized that. research? Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay, so I don't have a lot of experience with, um, strategy games. Uh, the only one I've really actually played is Civilization. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I guess it kind of reminds me of that, except with Civ, you don't really have a choice as to what you get to pick with your race, not your race, your um, culture yeah, exactly. starting. Um, but a lot of this, it kind of reminds me of that. I don't know. Yeah. This, this is coming from somebody that doesn't play strategy games at all. Yep. No, that's, that's a very similar... Um... It's a very similar thing. I'll go over just the other concepts real quick, and then you can see what might be you, you, what, what kind of thing you want your race to be good at. Adaptive and extremely adaptive and non-adaptive. Those all um, uh, play with the the habitability. Uh, basically, there are different types of planets, oh, okay. um, and the more adaptable you are, the more you can you can thrive on a non-ideal planet type versus um, somebody else that versus, might not exactly have that. okay who might be very uh, fussy about what type of planet they're they're on uh slow and rapid breeders in, involves uh, yeah. population growth 
Talented um, is uh, involves your leaders. Your leaders uh, level up as they as they go on, and there's a level cap. This adds one to the level cap, so it allows them to get even higher level when you're you make sure leaders capable of of being even better than normal. Okay. Uh, quick and slow learners. That affects how quickly they get experience. Makes sense. Traditional um, and quarrelsome involve unity. Unity is basically the cultural technology of your. Uh, of your thing instead of you know raw you know physics and whatnot the cultural technology is you know how well your society evolves and you can go through different perks i'll show you that uh once you get enough unity but basically okay. how how cohesive and uh, you know resilient is the society okay uh strong very strong and weak are all about physical uh power so and oh army and okay. army damage uh, and worker output yep. okay and then nomadic versus sedentary involves how, how they want to um, migrate. Communal yep. and solitary involves how much housing they use. Charismatic uh, involves amenities. Those are, instead of goods, those are involves services. Okay. So, you know, charismatic one is, you know, better. Better, uh, better amenities exactly. versus repugnant. Okay. Uh, conformist versus deviance. Um, there are different ethics types, and we'll get into that in a moment. Um, and um, how often they want to deviate from that, how long your leaders live, uh, for venerable, enduring, and fleeting. Uh, decadent is a special one. That is your, your there's, there's three social st uh, strata, actually four technically. There's the rulers, the specialists, the workers, and slaves. Um, and your race in particular really doesn't like doing the legwork. So they become unhappy when they are employed as a worker or a slave. So they want to like the, hire out or enslave other species to, to do, do all it? the oh, hard okay. work. Well, they get to take the cushy specialist and ruler jobs. I mean, I feel like that's a peacock thing to do. <laughs> well, grab it. Go ahead. Well, I don't know. I want to look at all of them um, again. Resilient is um, a big army damage boost, but only for defensive ones, basically. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, mama, they go mama bear on anyone who might... Uh, uh, invade um, and then conservationist versus wasteful involves consumer goods upkeep uh, basically the physical goods that uh, people need to maintain their life and be comfortable um, and whether or not they use those uh, uh, properly or waste them and, and thus need to be fed more of them to keep them happy okay yeah you know what i'm going to take decadent and then so okay so then i have three trade points now yep because that's um, worth minus one what else? I mean, I feel like a peacock. Is yeah, also that's that. I'd say that's 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 pretty. Uh... Um, and what is this? Lifespan negative ten years. Wasteful and sedentary population now. Solitary. Deviance. Hmm. Go with fleeting. Mm -hmm. So now you got two uh, two points. Then, so you could get two one point traits or a right. single uh, two pointer. I mean, if they're going to have short lives, it might not be a bad idea for them to be rapid breeders. There you go. Um, I'm just trying to see what else the uh, options are up top here. Food, energy, industrious, intelligent, thrifty. Yeah, okay. All right, perfect. So go ahead and hit next. And then we can always get more of those if I decide to turn it into a GMO pe peacock? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, so now you need to ch decide what a type of planet this race is native to. Which What, what type of world do they like? Now, there's no in oh, inherent uh, benefits to one type or another. You don't get more food from a, a tropical. They basically evolved to farm and eat whatever is native to that type of world. Okay. Basically, the way it works is... So let's uh, go ahead and just pick one. I'm just kind of looking at them. Uh, I mean, I'm going to go with... I'm just gonna go right in the middle here. All right. So essentially, your ideal type of world are continental worlds. Mm -hmm. Your next best, that you know, a world that's okay, is gonna be either an ocean or the tropical. Anything okay. on the wet strata. Oh, okay. So anything in the same column. Exactly. These six are really, really hard for you to survive and thrive even with on. the adaptable. Well, with adaptable. Oh wait, did I take that? No, did I didn't. Not. Okay. Um, it's it's really hard. Even with adaptable, it's really hard to 
but you know, technology evolution, um, you know, gene modding or terraforming become options to sort of make the other types of planets, you know, useful to you. It, but that's later in the game. So for the time being, you're going to want to seek out continental worlds and be okay with oceans and tropical worlds. Okay. Uh, you can give it a name or just pick something random. Uh. I don't know. I'm kind of. I kind of think I want to change my species name. Can I do that? Sure. Okay. I want to like put in something with like plumage. Because like ah. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. Just uh, just at the. Uh, okay. There we go. Because I don't know. I feel. I feel like something with plumage is more peacocky. Mm -hmm. Uh. Plu plu. Okay. There. I don't Plumagians. know. Plu Plumagi Plumagians. Plumagians. I like Plumagians. it. Plumagians. Okay. Adjective feathery. It doesn't have to be the same thing. No, it doesn't. It's just when, when uh, events are constructed to use your race in, in either a singular, plural, or adjective. Okay. Um, yeah, you can go back down to name and class for the whole world. There you go. Okay. I don't know. I, mm. There you go. I, I'm not good at coming <laughs> up with names, but it's okay. Y'all bask. I mean, eh, the sun is fine. I'll yep. leave it how it is. Okay. The starting solar system, that, um, that just determines sort of the arrangement of your home star. There's no in-game benefit to it. You can have like a, a normal system, a binary, a trinary system. Okay. Um, but again, just uh, all cosmetic. Uh, I'll, I'll set it to random. And then city appearance, again, cosmetic, how you want to... Um... Well, I think I'm going to go with avian. There you go. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to see what the other ones looked like. All right. Now comes the next big gameplay impacting thing. So previously, we with, with the traits, we made what your race is naturally good and bad at. This is going to determine what your society is like. Oh, so it's like civics in civilization exactly okay so we start out we start out with ethics these are sort of core beliefs of your people that most pretty much everyone on your worlds uh, believes in um, and to what degree and each of these different beliefs are on opposite lines for a reason so for example xenophiles like other aliens they they want to meet other races befriend other races trade with them commingle with them Versus on the opposite side, the xenophobes right. hate other races, want nothing to do with them, or want to hurt them. Um, now, okay, I have a question, because I went with... No, wait, what did I choose for... You were charismatic... Um... Can I go back and look at yeah, it? Yeah, go okay. ahead. Uh, dec... Decadent. Oh, oops. oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh... There you go. Worker happiness, slave happiness. Oh, but I don't have to enslave people if you don't I don't want to, to no. right? Okay, because... Um, now, the, the uh, slavery is not a thing that's enabled by default. There are two ethics that allow slavery. Um, authoritarians will mm -hmm. uh, allow... Um, either degree of authoritarian allows slavery. And xenophobe allows slavery yeah, I don't, aliens. I don't want to do... I don't want to do that. Uh, cannot use unrestricted wars. Cannot engage in indiscriminate orbital bombardment. Okay. Materialist. These are basically, you know, science versus faith. Uh, oh. Materialist versus spiritualist. We can go... Well, wait. Fanatic? Basically, you get three points. You can do... Oh. You can do a normal of three different ones, or you can be a fanatical in one and then a normal in one other. Oh. And the fanatical versions are basically doubling up on, on the bonuses of okay. that. Of that well, one. I kind of like materialist because I feel like it goes well with, um, what was the one that we were just looking at in the trades? <laughs> Decadence. Decadent, yep. Um, and then I think I want to go, I don't know. Okay, hang on. The trade value, diplomatic influence upkeep. I think I'm going to go that and that. Okay. So fanatic, materialist, and xenophile. There you go. 
Next up, we have your basically your government's authority. How is your government structured? Because of your ethics, you have you have free reign on uh, all but the uh, Gestalt um, okay. uh, ones. Uh, so are they an, an, an emperor with a bloodline? <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, they're uh, an alternative to traits. Instead of picking three of these, you pick Gestalt right there in the middle. Oh, and that's a hive mind. Okay. Um, and yeah, you can do those. Um, Imperials basically. Are, are I'm sort of... I'm gonna go with Imperial. Okay. I feel like having kings and like you know with the crowns and their feathers, it, it just fits. That works. I'm kind of I got this whole RP thing in my mind right now <laughs> for these peacocks. And based on your ethics and your um, uh, government type, you now have a list of civics to pick from. Um, you know, some civics are are uh, allowed. Like for example, aristocratic elite is allowed because you're Imperial. Okay. Um, and um, you get to pick two of them. All of this, unlike the traits, the civics are 100% pure beneficial. And you okay. Get, and they're, they're all one, worth one point, so pick two of them, any two. Copper, rest settlement cost. Okay, I'm just kind of looking through the benefits just to see which one I think might go well. Ancient bureaucracy, environmentalist, hot consumer goods, feudal society. Um... Do you have any that you recommend um, for this? For your first one, um, I would suggest, well, an interesting one would be Mechanist. Uh, Mechanist um, starts, you start the game in addition to your, your biological pops, you start the game with eight robots. And with the you start the game with the technolo technology to make more robots. And since I have robot upkeep, that would be good, right? Yeah, that okay. would that would make them cheaper to to to. Make. And the robots are they're actually you know what they're that's a good alternative to slaves because mm. they take yeah. worker jobs that your pops don't want to do. Okay. So make the machines do it. Uh... Um, did you? Uh, I'm trying to remember the other one that you might have taken. Um, we can go yeah. back and look. Yeah, right? take a. Um, so that plays well into the deck. All right, it? so charismatic. Yep, and uh, rapid breeders. Um, so it, maybe something that might benefit from population growth. Yeah, the if you um, let's see here. Uh, actually, what I would suggest, um, and you could you could. Um, uh, I mean, environmentalists would be would be good to keep your uh, co uh, consumer goods low. So even as your population goes nuts, it's not going to be too taxing on the society. Right. Well, that's the thing. It's it's a, the environmentalist is is pure benefit. So it just makes it okay. let use them make makes them use less uh, goods uh, overall. Um, oh. The advisor is the. This is just um, you know the advisor telling you like you know construction is done and whatnot. You can sort of put them to a different uh, voice again, pure cosmetic. Um. Did you know that my internal power core has an effective blast? Democracy. Oh, this is cool. Okay. The Blorg are very friendly creatures. Pacifist module failing. Boundless horizons. Endless <laughs> learning opportunities. System diagnostic completed. I, I think I'm going to go. I may be an artificial intelligence. Yeah, I like. <laughs> but I share your information. <laughs> out fellow organic it's like. Among the stars. It's like an advisor that sounds like a valley girl. I kind of I kind of <laughs> love it. Okay. All right. Give your name, your empire, and oh, I thought I already did that. Well, this is just the the name of your of, of the empire. What do they even call our our? Uh, that was the name of your race, not necessarily the empire. Oh well, I I don't know. I I feel like you could just call it Feathertopia. You could call the call the feather. Whole... Okay. Okay. I and mean, are we still gonna feather, go with the feather to uh, yeah, are yeah. Feathery. feathery. I don't know. I'm really bad at naming things. <laughs> okay. Here's where you can design your flag. Ooh. And again, all cosmetic, but again, it this. As your empire grows, the your the color of your empire's borders will spread out, and the colors are determined by your flag colors. And you got different categories of things. Oh, there. oh my God! Okay, uh, ornate. Ooh, 
Okay, yeah, we're gonna go with one of these. Actually, I like that one. Oh, eh! No. Okay, I like that. Then you can use the pattern of colors. I already... Oh, well, I was, but I, I kind of like the one. Or maybe not. Yeah, I like that. Okay. All right. And then, again, cosmetic choice. Oh, with avian. Stick to the theme. Yep. Okay. And my ruler. You can um, you can give them a your starting ruler a name, and also you want you can say what what the rulers are um, in um, in your society. So the you know the default here is overlord, but maybe you want to call it you know high empress or chief feather duster or. I was actually thinking of uh, of. Um... Well, what happens if it's oh ruler title title female? So and what happens if hit, it's you hit oh male, okay? Then you can set the, the title for a male. Queen Featherface. <laughs> okay, and then hey, go King Featherface. And then because you're imperial, the game Oops. keeps track of who your heir is and what their title is. Come on, I can't type. Oh my gosh, I cannot type on your keyboard. <laughs> Minor feather face. Okay. My minor. Ah. Okay. All right. Um, here you can choose. Um, these, these you can't choose just because the certain oh, races. Okay, you color variants. Ooh. Okay, so I like that one, mm -hmm. like the white one. And then the room is again cosmetic, but when you have diplomatic uh, communications with other uh, other races, this is what your race will be standing in when you're talking to them. Useful for multiplayer. I like this one. Okay. All right. And here we are, the plume, uh, the uh, feather topia. <laughs> Here's uh, just a summary of all the uh, all the things you've picked here: your homeworld type, your emblem, your race, your society. Uh, your ethics. Uh, so I say we're in a pretty good spot. So in our next episode, we'll be diving into the game with um, Feathertopia and seeing uh, and, and showing you around, showing you okay. how to uh, get started ruling the stars. Sounds good. So guys, if you like this episode and you want to see more like it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment. Good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, your feedback's always welcome. If you have any questions, um, no matter how new player-ish, please leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, so this has been Pinstar. And Mystic. And we're signing out. Bye. See ya.